You're an Israelite, and you got to keep God's commandments. What day is the Sabbath? You told me it was Sunday. Don't forget it. It's Saturday. All right, it's Saturday. Sister, how do you get the kingdom of God? We're going to show you right now. All right? We're going to show you right now. Matthew chapter 19. All right? Why are we out here today? To teach God's laws to our people. Because we understand that God's laws is the key to eternal life. You want to live forever? Of course you do. Who out here don't want to live forever? Right? We all want to live forever. All right? Come on. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold. Whoa. What's your name? Now we Israelites. All right? More means black. All right? We Israelites. We keep God's commandments. We the chosen, according to the Bible. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, this is you. Tell me your name again, sister. Shayla. All right, this person came to Christ and said, how do I get eternal life, right? You right now, how do I get eternal life? We about to show you, but we gonna show you what Christ told the person that asked him the same question. Wanted the same eternal life. Wanted to be in God's same heaven. That's where you wanna be, right? Come on. Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So it's only one good is the Father. Right? Christ was in complete, total submission to his father. That's the example that he left for us to follow. Right? So now since Christ taught us the way, we follow Christ's example. What did Christ say to this man that wants eternal life? What did Christ say to this man that wants to live forever? Come on. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you're going to enter into life, eternal life, right? If you want to get the kingdom of heaven. Right? Listen good. Read. Keep the commandments. What does the Bible say? Keep the commandments. What does the Bible say? Keep the commandments. So we got to learn what God's commandments are. So we can make sure that we're keeping them on a daily basis. We can't take off. All right? You can't put the commandments up. All right? Put them in your closet because you want to go out today and have a good time. All right? You can't do that according to the Bible. God says you're too precious for that. You're too precious. You call... You were called to be holy and special. All right? A holy, special people, but only if you keep in God's commandments. That's right. That's the only way that you're going to be holy and special unto God. You got to be doing what he says. You got any children, sister? No children at all. Okay. All right. Uh, finish that on out. And he, he said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Right? So these are commandments of the Lord that we must keep to receive eternal life. Right? If we're not keeping these commandments, do you think we're going to get eternal life from the Lord? No, we're not. Right? So you have a dress on today. All praises. You see what dresses will do for you? It'll put a different spirit on you. It'll make you feel like a woman. Don't you feel more like a woman when you got... Is that why you wear dresses? Because it makes you feel beautiful? Right? It makes you look uh, look and feel nice. Right? Right? That, that's God created you to feel that way. You're supposed to be soft and meek and precious and holy unto God. Right? Not walk with Timberland boots on. Right? You can't be out here with pants on, with little shorts on and stuff like that. Right? You go, you, you're not going to look holy unto the Lord. Right? You're going to look like you want to you wanna get touched by the Lord. <laughs> that's how you're going to look. You're going to look like you want some judgment for the Lord. Right? You're going to send that, that nigga your way from the Lord. Right? That's what will happen. And then what's going to happen? You can get stuck with a baby. You don't want that to happen to you. Read what you got. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So God says adorn yourself modestly in modest apparel. What's that mean? To be modest. Modest in par apparel. To be modest in apparel. What's that mean? To dress nice, it is dressing nice, but it's more to that to that modesty. All right, because are you married, sister? Do you want to be married? Yeah. Okay, you do want to be married. Now, do you want to be special to your husband, or do you want to be just like everybody else? You want to be special, no question. That's easy, right? Easy. It's, 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 no, why would you even ask me that? Of course, the answer is I want to be special to my husband, right? Well. 
if you're out here, right, and you're dressed in such a way that reveals everything that should be for your husband, you understand what I'm saying? Are you still special to him? No, you're not, right? So we have to be very mindful of how we leave the house, right? And we want to make sure that we prepare ourselves for our husband so that when we get one, we're special to him, right? And we save something for him. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we want to do. So read that again. Verse 9. Come on. And like men also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right, because oftentimes our women will dress immodestly. And what that means is when you reveal your skin, you reveal your curves, right? You reveal your precious things that the Lord gave you, all right? To provide and to, to, to be a blessing, right? And to be enjoyed, but by who? Your husband. Your husband, right? To be enjoyed by him, right? So these are things we got to be mindful of, all right? As we get dressed in the morning, all right? As we shopping in the stores, right? You want to you don't want to shop for the things that's going to reveal your body the most. You want to cover yourself up. Still be beautiful, but you want to preserve those things that the Lord bless you with for who? For your husband, right? Come on. With shame facedness and sobriety. Right, because most sisters that you see, maybe not you, right? But I'm talking about everybody else, right? Most of these people that you see that may have they breast out, they may have they butt out, right? They may have they back and they shoulders, all that stuff out, right? How do they behave themselves? Do they got a very quiet mouth? <laughs> what type of mouth do they got, sis? They got a big, loud, black mouth, right? Why is that? Why is that? It's, it's a spirit that they put on. They're, they, they're already putting on a, 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 a spirit of to that that's that's not kept right it's not reserved right it's already very forward and enticing right that that's what that is so you're uh already attracting the wrong attention to begin with right that's an aggressive approach right but our sisters should be passive right not not aggressive right they, they shouldn't be out here uh uh choosing you understand what man they want Right? Their father should be in their lives, right, to determine what man is good enough for his daughter. That's how that should work, right? But our sisters will dress themselves like bait to attract the man that they want for the night. Doesn't that happen? Right? That's, that's not the right mindset. That's the wrong mindset. We can't live our lives that way. Was that it? All right, read it again. I want the shame faces. Did you read that part? All right, read it again, verse 9. Verse 9, in like men also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame facedness. Shame facedness, right? If a sister is shamed, right, that means that she might not even be looking a bunch of men in their eyes all the time, right? Because the script, what's the script tell you about your eyelids? Give me that Proverbs about the sister's eyelids today, right? Today, you always know that sister, maybe not you, I'm talking about all the other sisters, right? But she be in the club, and that man that she want, what she try to do? She try to get, how she get his attention? She lock eyes with him, right? She try to lock them eyes with But the scriptures tell you a woman should be shamed. She shouldn't be all in a man's face, right? If a man see a woman and she all in his face, what's she trying to tell him? That she want him, right? This stuff easy, right? We know this. We try to act like we don't know. But if the sister want a man, right? She gonna try to make sure she she lock eyes, she get the eye contact with him. You know, she want him to know that she see him, right? And that she is available. That's what she's trying to communicate through what? Her eyes. You know what I want? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. 25. 25? 25. Thank you. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 25. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. God say, lust not after her beauty. Right? But our sisters. Dress to be lusted after. That's how our sisters dress today. To be lusted after. Right? That's how you determine what you're going to put on today. You know, you want everybody to want you and not her. <laughs> not your sister. <laughs> the one that you go into the club with. The one you go into the event with. The one you go into your mama house with. 
right? The one you going to celebrate, you know, the, the birthday with, right? You don't want the brothers to want her. You want them to want you, right? Come on. Verse 25. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. But the sister, right? They are trying to take a man with their eyelids. Y'all know what I'm talking about? What does this put on their eyelids today? Makeup and what else? They got eyelid extensions now. Did you know that? Yeah. They, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Why sisters wear those? To draw attention, right? To wear. Well, where are they trying to draw attention to? To their eyes. They want somebody to look them in their eyes. That's why they put them things on their eyes. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right, sisters? Right? You want to get the, you want to get that attention. So you can, you know, you want the man to lock eyes with you, to see you looking, to to, 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 to see you looking at him, right? And then you uh, flatter him, flatter him with your eyelids, right? You heard the, 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 you you you've seen this and you've heard this terminology before. Why else would they make eyelid extensions for, other than to draw attention to your eyes? That's why you that's why you put makeup on to draw attention to your face, right? So we need not to be excessive in it, right? We need because we want to beautify ourselves. The sisters speak about, we read the scriptures, we, 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 the, the scriptures speak about women that dress themselves with all types of apparel, right? First Peter chapter 3, but it's important that that not, not take precedence, all right, over what? The things on the inside, your spirit on the inside, all right? How you behave, your mindset, the things you think about, the things you desire to have, all right? First Peter chapter 3, you know what I want? Sure. Come on. First Peter chapter 3 verse 4. Come on. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Your mind. Your heart is your mind according to the Bible. Come on. Verse 3. Who's adorning, let it not. How you fashion yourself. Your adorning. How you dress yourself. Come on. Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning. Don't focus on the outward too much. Don't put too much attention on the outside stuff. All right? Don't put too. Yeah, you're going to want to take care of yourself. Right? I'm not saying don't be beautiful. Be, be beautiful, sister. God created you to be beautiful. All right? But don't show everybody out here, all right, your private areas. Don't do that because that's preserved for your husband. Come on. Let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair. Of what? Of plaiting the hair. You know how sisters will put plaits in their hair? That's fine. You can do that. Don't let that be your full focus. Your, don't have your, your full attention on that. Come on. And of wearing of gold. Or putting on of apparel. Or the changing of clothes and your jewelry, right? And all of that. You don't want that to be your focus. You want to focus on the inside, right? The the inside, the things on the inside, right? The, what is the sister meditating on, right? Is her spirit meek? Is she a, a arguer? Does she argue with men? Is she does, does she chest bump her husband when she get mad? Are they in the house fighting? You understand? Is she lying? Is she a liar? Is the sister a liar? She called the police on you? How the white man come and try to lock you up? You know? Is she that type of sister? I don't know. I don't know. The only way you will know is you get to know the sister's mind. You won't know that by how she dressed, right? You may can assume some things, right? But you only know if you get to know the sister's mind. That's what's precious, right? Come on. Verse 4. But... Let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart, meaning your mind. Was that it? So, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Oh man, read that again. Which is not, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. A meek and quiet spirit. This is the prayer that all of our Israelite sisters should be praying every single day. Lord, please give me a meek and quiet spirit, right? I know I like to talk back. I know I like to have my way. I know I like to be heard, right? I know that I have been spoiled and given, you know, all of my heart's desire by the so-called white man. He gave me the food stamps. He gave me the welfare. He didn't make me feel like I got something, and I don't need my black man, right? That's what the white man did, 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 did to us, right? But you need to be praying every day to have what type of spirit? Come on. A quiet, excuse me, of a meek and quiet spirit. You need to be praying for a meek and quiet spirit. That comes from who? The Lord. Only the Lord can give you that thing, right? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, 
nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.